I always had self-esteem issues. From a young age, I always had weight problems. I was always underweight. I could see that I didn't look like everyone else. And you know when you're around that age, you want to fit in and everyone's trying to be alike and whatever, and I just didn't fit into that description or whatever that everyone else fitted. And from then I just felt like, okay, I have a problem. And then on top of that, people used to make comments like people would call me anorexic, chicken legs, skin and bone, a twig, skeleton. And my thing is this, like, if you were to see an obese person or someone overweight, you would never go to that person and say, uh, like, you're so fat. And do you know what I mean? But people don't understand that the effect is the same. Like, it would affect someone that is underweight or slim exactly the same and it sometimes it's not a choice like you there's an actual issue behind it see I didn't have confidence and I never stood up for myself ever I just kind of laughed with them but just to cover that pain I didn't want anyone to know I was feeling that kind of pain I moved to Ireland with my mum my brother and my sisters and my dad had gone back to Gambia so all this was going on obviously I had these confidence issues and then I'm going to another place where I really don't want to go. I'm leaving my life, all my friends and everything behind and on top of that my dad is going on the other side of the world. It was a big change for me and that made everything worse. At the time I didn't realise that I had depression or anything. I just, I don't know, I didn't really know much about it. But it was just getting worse and worse. I used to be so disrespectful to my mum. I mean, at this point, me and my mum had a really bad relationship. And just, when, I, when I look back now, I, I, regret, I still regret it till this day so much. Like, it's so crazy. Um, I was just disrespectful. I used to go out, go out late, not listen to her. And just, I just wasn't myself at all. Mm -hmm. I'd met someone, I fell in love. Um, being in a relationship and having depression and anxiety is one of the hardest things because one, you're not yourself and your mind is negative. So for me, it was regardless of whatever he did or even if it was like nice, generous, I would never, I couldn't appreciate it fully because I always felt like, okay, you're doing this because you feel like you have to or even if there's no negative in the situation, you'll find a negative. Like, you'll make one up in your head and make it seem so real. And then it just always caused issues. And it just, the situation became very toxic. And I did that with a lot of people around me. Not just that relationship, friendships, family. And I pushed a lot of people away. And I always, I always felt like, why are people always leaving? Like, what am I doing that's so wrong? And nothing was ever my fault. Just... It's always that person doing something to me and then they just leave, you know? Me and my brother are really close, but I still couldn't tell him certain things. Not just him, just anyone. No one actually knew the extent of what I was going through at that time. I started drinking. Like, I became dependent. Like, it was a thing of where in the morning, during the day, before I go to bed, like, I couldn't function. Without just just to to hide that, just so that I don't feel that pain. But obviously, it made it so much worse. Of course, um, I remember at my lowest point, um, I was suicidal. Um, I just didn't want to be here. Like, I just felt like I was just always unhappy. And I, I remember always feeling like God was punishing me for something. Um, I never knew what, there was never an explanation or any evidence of that or whatever, but I just always felt like I was just being punished. And I just didn't want to be here. Like, I didn't understand why I was here. There was, it was so hard for me to, except that I'm, I'm here, but I'm just always unhappy. And at that point too, my weight became, became an even 
bigger issue. Like, I lost so much weight to the point where you could see my bones. Like, my chest, my ribs, back, everything. It was so bad. It got to the point where it's like, just walking down the road, even if it's just for five or ten minutes, it was just so painful. Like, my joints, everything. And at that point, I realised, like, no, I need to make a change. And I realised no one can do this for me. It's just only I can. I started a um, diet plan, basically. Um, I was eating, like, seven meals a day. I was having like, three protein shakes, but I used to make the homemade protein shakes at the time, and three, I'd work out three times a day. So usually I'd go to the gym twice and then work out at home. Um, I don't even, I can't explain to you what came over me or how I even did all of it. Seven meals a day is a lot. It's a lot. Um, I just wanted it that bad that nothing was going to stop me. Nothing was going to hold me back. I was tired, you know. It had gone on for so long. I'd been going through with that pain for so long and I just, nothing was going to stop me from achieving what I wanted to achieve. My brother had come to visit us one weekend in Manchester and that was when I was still quite, re like, quite low. And he introduced me to something called The Secret. And he was explaining it to me. Basically, it's just about the power of positive thinking and how you can change your life and situations around you, attract certain people into your life. When he was explaining it to me, I was like, I really don't want to watch this <laughs> at all. Like, it didn't sound appealing. But I watched it, and I couldn't believe, like, what I was seeing and hearing. Like, it just completely changed my mindset. And... It just made me understand that everything that I need to make this change is already within me. I already have it. Like, I don't need to search anywhere, like, what I was doing. And it, made, it just gave me understanding. It gave me belief, hope, faith, everything. And from that moment, everything just started to change for me. I've met new people. I've rekindled past relationships that meant a lot to me. Um, and just the things that I'm doing now, I think I'm a lot more productive. The old Omi was afraid. She was lost. She had no hope, no faith. Um, she just didn't know where she was going or what she was doing. The new Omi, she's strong. She knows what she wants. She understands that being vulnerable doesn't make you weak. And it's okay to not be okay sometimes. My mum is my best friend. <laughs> Literally, you know, we're really close. My whole family, we're all close. We are really a close family. Um, yeah, my mum is someone, like, she's a real inspiration for me. Just watching, like, certain things that she's been through. And, like, I even remember when we were living in Ireland, she was working, like, three jobs. She was in uni and coming home to four kids. Do you know what I mean? Like, she just always finds a way to make things happen and make things work. And her strength is just amazing. But she doesn't know it. She doesn't see that. Too many times, like, we say, oh, I'm like this because this happened to me. I'm like this because my dad wasn't there. My mum wasn't there. This person cheated on me. Yes, okay, those things did happen. And I'm not saying that the effect on you is not real. It is. But what are you going to do about it? What are you... Okay, it's happened, but it doesn't stop there. It's up to you to do something about it, make a change, and don't allow your past to become your reality. When you do that, you stay stuck in the past and life will continue moving forward and you just get left behind. I'm a fighter. <laughs> um, I didn't know I had that kind of strength in me. 